we have war in Europe once again. Involving our mighty friends here. Seems that it's just some scuffles in the HRE, but let's have a closer look at it. The Bohemian Conquest. So Bohemia is now asserting their right to the Saxon lands. Unfortunately for Bohemia, he seems to ups upset the burgers. And I'm not talking about them growing legs and walking off of his dinner plate. The uh, burger estate are not only disloyal to him, fortunately for him though, they do not have much influence over the land. So the penalties they cause him are minor, but if those burgers were to secure somewhat more influence, they could hurt him harder. That would mean unrest in provinces that they control, and harsher penalties on things like development cost and trade efficiency. On the flip side, he has the clergy with very high influence, but only a lukewarm level of loyalty. If that were to fall much further, the, uh, the consequences would be rather bad because of that large amount of influence. We also have the nobility that he is keeping strong. He wants that land force limit up so he can mount a fairly large army, seasoned from the Hussite Wars. The glorious music playing at the moment is from uh, Kairi's Music Pack, which is available when you play in the East here. Now, Austria is also helping out Bohemia, but I would not be surprised if it was because they uh, had their own ambitions here. They're making claims all around themselves, they don't appear to be afraid of any coalition, they are the Emperor. In fact, Daniel, the uh, the player of Austria, was in here yesterday, and when asked what they want, they said just a big Austrian empire. And part of that empire includes Copenhagen. Yes, it seems Denmark is one of the uh, recent additions to the Holy Roman Empire. And now they are offered imperial protection. Could even be that when we lose an elector, Denmark may become one of them. Probably on the promise that they maintain Austria as the elector. Now, I, when I was going to be playing in this game, I was initially ruled as France, but Patrick took over for that. I said my goal would be to disband the Holy Roman Empire, so... Hopefully someone else will pick up that mantle. In the meantime, I have to uh, hold on to my belief that Gotland shall remain in this game. I want Gotland to be forever. We're being asked what is Brandenburg's victory card. I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't have one due to their size. Indeed, they have uh, only 214 development, so it'll take a uh, little bit more for them to grab a victory card. They need 300. It is a sad day for a zoo. I believe they were just annexed by Japan. Well, hard times befall us all. But Japan are now... Uh, showing their dominance here. They've gobbled up Ainu. There is very little resistance to them inside the islands. At least Ryukyu's still there. Come on, Ryukyu. I'm sure you can do it. Good to see the Shou dynasty still strong there. As strong as ever. Okay, the Timurids are uh, not content with their current land mass. They're doing another grab over in Sindh. The Timurids have a huge amount of power beneath them. This could be that long-awaited war with Delhi. Well, it certainly includes Delhi. Let's have a closer look at that. Delhi is not a co-belligerent here, so they'll be uh, a little harder to take land from. Twice as expensive to take land from a non-co-belligerent here. 
but what are they going to be doing here? If it's purposely on sins, they may want to be getting rid of this brown stain on their glorious empire. But that does bring them ever closer to Bachmanes, who must know that uh, time is ticking out for them, and they're going to need to establish a firm power base. They're already allied with what remains of Bengal and Malwa. For however long such an alliance can remain between Shia and Sunni, But other than some brawl in the central Germany, and it looks like more picking off of Poland. Oh my, Karsten is on the rampage now. What is he up to? As expected, he could not leave Arabia to be. Hejaz will fall to him and his glorious march Syria. He obviously does not want to leave all that to the mercy of the Timurids. He needs to build up his own power base. And indeed, there is a lot of power to be had if you secure this region. The trade, as the coffee flows, is certainly worth a good chunk of money. He's caught himself up in terms of military technology as well. Keeping that focus firmly on military power, but for whatever reason, not having a military advisor. Could be that they recently died. Would be unlike... Karsten not to uh, keep that going. Obi Dobi must be feeling a little safer now. They mounted up a large amount of aggressive expansion, but with their new... Uh, their buddy France, they should be safe. Should be. They've now secured Verona. And that's another one off the checklist for land that they need to form Italy, which is no doubt their ambition here. And quite a bit of the borders spilling together here from when we started. It won't be long until uh, ambitions start to conflict. How long can the mighty alliance between our laser Daniel Fido and Witch King, that is to say Ottomans, Hungary, Austria and Bohemia, maintain. All keeping strong mutual alliances here with the addition of Brandenburg and Denmark for Austria. Yes, Austria having an entire laundry list of friends there. It is likely hurting their uh, diplomacy. Yes, indeed, they are one over the limit, but often that is worth it, to have friends in high places. Meanwhile, though, England is playing it safe. Seems they have not decided to uh, launch all-out attack on France here. But they are not putting down their forts. They are good and ready for if anybody comes to attack them. Large build-up as it is here as well. And they've broken their alliance with Scotland. Now, why would they do such a thing? Let's have a look. Now, they have a mission to improve their prestige, so it's not like their uh, mission is to subjugate the Scots. But if they've broken their alliance with Scotland, it can mean surely only one thing. I wish to have another look over at Portugal. Since they are our key to the new world, and... They are exploring it. They've done a bit of coastline exploration here. We can finally see one of the New World's nations. We have Zotri over here. Now, what are you exactly? You're a Mesoamerican. You're more than likely outside of the range of Portugal. But will there be a uh, peaceful bit of coexistence between you and our Europeans? I wouldn't bet on it, but it can be nice to dream. So here we are, our first glance at the land in our new, random new world. We can just see the coastline because that is what Portugal has explored.
Who knows what riches are out there. General development levels are none too shabby. Different levels of uh, natives and their aggressiveness as well, but that doesn't matter too much to Portugal, since they, uh, they are taking a policy where they live and let live. Yes, they have the native coexistence policy, which means they are not going to get uprisings, but their colonies are going to grow quite a bit slower there. And somebody was asking about development levels in the New World provinces. Seems we have a bit of a poor region over here, but it got quite a bit richer as we hit up the areas of uh, Kudersport. Yakt. Rani Barky. Portugal will no doubt uh, start carving it up in their mind and establish themselves some rich colonies over there as soon as they have the range. And they've got exploration. They're also going for expansion. They are no doubt investing as much as they can into the colonial game. And when it comes to technology, they're going to want to boost that colonial range as quickly as they can. Once they hit level 7, that should open up a whole new world to them. Seems they're getting greedy for the cape as well, though. Cape, a staggering 15 development, and if you strike gold at the cape, well, you are set. The English mounting 40,000 troops on the Scottish border. It's not looking so good for the Scots. Fair play to them. They fought hard in Sweden, and thanks to that, Sweden is now gutted by Novgorod. Even Livonian order lost out against AI Novgorod. Yeah, Muscovy was able to uh, break a bit of the Golden Horde, but when the player sits back in the Muscovite seat and wrestles control away from the AI, they may find they'll have a bit of trouble taking on Novgorod and the Golden Horde. Novgorod, though, only had their alliance with Scotland. Such an alliance with the Golden Horde could clearly not persist. They may have to do some messy diplomacy, though, as this great power block of Bohemia, Austria, Hungary and Ottomans continues to snake their way. Austria on a feeding rampage. They want it all. Oh my! There's more to this new world than we may have first expected. And indeed, the Portuguese are settling here. Whether or not the English like it. Let's have a closer look at them. Some uh, respectable development there. 8 and 11. And it looks like something landed here long ago. Forming the Nascatu Sea. The Portuguese, clearly curious are on their way to investigate. Maybe far north and rather cold. But some of the development here isn't too shabby. Now we'll see if the Portuguese decide to keep all this to themselves. Will they even tell the Brits? Can the Brits even see? No, the British already know about this. But will the British be gunning it down like they will likely gun down the Scots? People are asking for the trade and how it flows in here. So we have this trade node. It's called Kib. And it flows into the North Sea, it seems, unless my eyes betray me. It's flowing into the North Sea and the English Channel. 
Now that's bad news for Portugal since they can't actually secure much of that wealth. But what else do we have coming out? Ooh. Well, let's not spoil the fun of that until more is revealed. Yeah, we'll do it anyway. Now, what do we have coming in here? We have the usual Ivory Coast malarkey. But we have the area of Ravita. And Sinito. They are sending trade up to Safi, it seems. Not just Safi, but flowing into the Ivory Coast as well. I don't think we've discovered the node there, so we can't click on it. But unsurprisingly, trade from the south flowing its way to its inevitable destination of Sevilla, then into Genoa. Okay, Poland is very nearly wiped off of the map here. Tragic day for them. In the previous campaign, Poland uh, maintained a reasonable amount of power, exploding near the end to become a real powerhouse as they demolished what was left of Lithuania. But our Poland in this game shall have no such destiny. Seems that their uh, terminus is to become food for Brandenburg and or Bohemia here. Even Galicia Volhynia, the AI, gobbling up what little they can now. And Lithuania simply being kept for dessert afterwards. We have France that's at war now, but it's just with Genoa. Seems they're trying to grab any bit of uh, Italian land they can here. They just want to get themselves big since the north, the west, and the east cordoned off by both their ally and their greatest enemy. It's a sorry fate for uh, France to swallow since Aragon is no longer a possibility due to the uh, Iberian wedding. And since Castile have positive prestige, that, uh, that union is not going to break anytime soon. On top of that, their queen is very young. So a sorry state of affairs for France, who's blocked off at the north, the east, the west, and the south. Their only option, sail away and try to make a land grab around here. They've already grabbed Genoa. Looks like they want to grab a bit more, but they will be treading on the toes of Milan who wishes to add these Italian provinces to his uh, growing variety of provinces. Oh, obi dobi. Now, as I said before, Milan was walking on eggshells and they've mounted themselves a nice little coalition again. But perhaps part of the agreement is an alliance with France to keep them safe. Since with France as an ally, as long as France remains strong, or at least strong enough, that coalition is unlikely to fire upon them. But that makes France the only player, the only player in the game right now, who is at war. Of course, the Ottomans, with that large amount of admin in the bank, and claims as far as they can go, he's probably riled up and ready for war. Mamluk carving out little parts of Arabia for themselves, grabbing the Mamlukian Hejaz. And it would appear that uh, the Timurids have come along here, raised the land to the ground, and secured themselves another vassal, Baluchistan. It seems the build-up of power here is uh, approaching critical mass here. Sooner or later, they're going to run out of uh, mutually beneficial targets. And somebody somewhere 
is going to start stirring that pot and conflicts will erupt. Now when you consider that France is that blue spotch surrounded on all fronts they all just need to tighten a bit and that is France choked out of the game so they need to tread very carefully diplomatically. Of course this great alliance between Fido Witch King Daniel and our laser frightening in its own right. Now Brandenburg has taken over a fair chunk of provinces I wonder how they're treating their estates at the moment. So they're keeping all of their estates rather lukewarm with their loyalty and not allowing too much influence. The nobility have a good chunk of influence. Now bear in mind, if that influence goes over 80%, they run quite a bit of a risk of a noble coup, which uh, it's not good for your country. I assure you it is not. Brandenburg on the other side, they're giving their nobility a fair chunk of power, but also keeping them nice and loyal. They want to enjoy those bonuses now. We also have some interactions for them that we can use. Now these are still very much in progress. But we could grant ourselves a general with good tradition if we wanted to give those nobility some uh, good influence. So assuming Brandenburg, uh, sorry not Brandenburg, Burgundy, were in uh, a bit of a do or die war and they needed a better general, they could certainly grant a bit of influence towards the nobility in exchange for a general. However, uh, it comes with its own dangers, because it's already at 62. Bringing it up to 80 could be dangerous. Speaking of dangerous, they have gone to war. But it's just with Savoy, and I don't think Savoy is going to be putting up too much resistance to that. They're calling in their good ally France just to solidify their friendship there. whilst Austria tries to ensure that Venice is kicked out of the picture, but Venice still have their uh, Venezia here. And as long as they have a healthy, uh, a healthy fleet waiting for them, the Austrians will not be allowed to cross. Still, that, uh, that means the provinces here are not connected to a fort, and so they can be taken in the peace deal without too much hassle. Austria is also building up something proper around here temples and workshops and such, trying to keep that money flowing. The emperor is extremely rich at the moment. I wonder if he is the richest man alive. Let's have a quick look at that. No, the Ottomans claim that title by a healthy margin. Checking out the income as well, Ottomans comfortably making the most money, followed up by England. Yes, England are not to be toyed with in this game. It's a tragic state of affairs, but England often get destroyed in these sessions. Wiz decided to show them how it's all done. Although he has still not pulled the trigger on the Scots. More than likely because he has to wait out a truce there. Jake, how does one manage the various estates? Weaken or strengthen influence? The same for loyalty. Let's have a look at those estates again. Now, ideally, you want to have them extremely loyal. That is just a given. And following that, you want them to have fairly high influence if they are loyal. But you've got to be careful with that, because if they turn disloyal, and that can be affected through events, territorial exchanges, what land you give them. Uh, if they end up suddenly disloyal, but still with a lot of influence, they're going to cause a lot of problems for your country, both on a national and a provincial level. So if you find that they're getting too disloyal, you may want to pool all their influence by taking away uh, the land that you've granted to them. But there is a cooldown on that. There's a fair bit of balancing to go on with that, and you will want to find the ideal situation for you. 
Some may wish to harvest the rewards from the uh, the estates. Others may want to keep them cool, uh, lukewarm, and others may just want to uh, spit in the face of their authority. I say that is a uh, Cossacks expansion feature, the estates. And check that on England, the uh, provinces that they have given away. For example, Ireland, ruled by the clergy. Now the clergy being there and liking uh, the ruler means that they keep the unrest down, likely put there to uh, keep the Irish in their place, stop them from rising up against the English rule. Now it's all very peaceful, but there is no doubt tension between the players as they wonder, will their alliances hold? Will people strike out to attack them? Speaking of being struck out and attacked, seems that the Mamluks are putting uh, Tunis out of it. Forza is an excellent player, so when opportunity strikes, he will not mind digging in. Siri is asking about uh, balance and estates and such. Well, as I said, all this is still very heavily in development. That's a good chunk of why we do these sessions. We want to play test them, get a feel for the balance, and since this is all hot code, it is all getting worked on as we speak. Wiz, whilst he is in the game, he is really in the game. And that was the end of Tunis. Good fight, good night. The Mamluks grow ever stronger whilst eyeing up the Ottoman threat to the north. The threat that uh, continues to grow and grow. Speaking of which, we have the, uh, the Timurids over here on the warpath yet again, truly embracing Horde lifestyle. And the Mamluks could well be right to go for this early, since the Timurids want in on that. Now they probably want to strengthen their vassal Iraq here. There's a bit of a trade-off, though. If they ta if they give those provinces back to Iraq directly, there's no raising to be done for the Timurids, so it'll be interesting to see how this plays out for them. Will they give it straight to their vassal to strengthen them, or will they go, oh, wait, I need to uh, burn down a few buildings here? Because these provinces are not exactly worthless. If you were to raise them, you're looking at a good 75 monarch points apiece. Perhaps he wants Basra for himself, since he's keeping that. It is up to Timurids how he wants to play this, but uh, he is mounting his forces here, strengthening himself, ready to dip his fangs into India. Bachmanis has done well with the situation that they've been given. They really uh, brought up their forces here, managed to consolidate a good position in the subcontinent. being asked if we're going to add any new provinces. I do not have a final answer on that, I'm afraid. Now we only have about five minutes left on this session, so it uh, would be very unbecoming for someone to start a large player war since it's often going to end up in uh, bad things for them, as people can plot. Our players here can and will plot heavily between the sessions. And if you were to start a player war right at the end, you would probably find that that person you thought was friendless has a lot more friends than you initially thought. And 
as our final minutes tick down. I'm going to pop out for just a sec.